Hello, everybody. This is Lisa giving you greetings from Maryland. How's everyone? I hope everyone is enjoying themselves, enjoying their families, time with God, spending oneness with the Lord, reading the word. Everyone, this is Lisa, and I want to um, come before you today with um, a topic that is very prevalent in this world today. This topic is going to be about relationships and marriage vows and um, how in infidelity affects the spirit and um, about what happens when you're not keeping the fire burning within your marriage and relationship. So let's um, welcome the Lord first and foremost in the place. And let's get started with this fiery subject. Everyone, Yeshua HaMashiach, I welcome you, O God Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. Lord Jesus, I ask that you let your anointing fall down on me in this video and those who are seeking you today. Lord, with help in their marriages and relationships, Father, that's leading up to marriage, Father, for guidance. Sending your comforter, Lord, we petition Michael and the Warring Angels to come down with their flaming swords from all ranks and divisions. With their nets, Lord, they cast every unclean thing that want to hinder us in our marriages into a dry place, to the pit of hell. We turn off in this place and must die by your fire. In Jesus' mighty name, Jesus, we welcome you. We embrace your presence, your anointing. May the Holy Spirit speak through me. Let your word come forth, Father, and deny myself. And for me to just listen to you, Lord, speak through me to help others in their relationships. In Jesus' mighty name. So hello, 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 hello all. Let's get started. I'm ready to get this started. So, you know, it's so prevalent today that marriages end up in divorce. And I believe that one of the reasons for this is because, you know, we must adhere to God's warnings about the covenant of marriage and the bride and the groom. And First and foremost, when we take that covenant, when we take the vows, Jesus said that he do not wish for us to fornicate if we are not, um, you know, married. He wished for us to wait. He said, but if you feel that though it's, it's better to marry than to burn, meaning this, if you're good enough to to sleep with you're good enough to marry. In other words, Jesus want us to marry before we fornicate with someone, meaning sex before marriage and of course before marriage. Because it's sin when we're doing opposite. And in Matthew 19, 6, he said, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Now, when I was um, in prayer recently, I heard the words, what well, God has joined together, let, let no man put asunder. And I was saying to myself, well, Lord, why are you, uh, why am I hearing this? You know, so God wished for no one to come in between your marriage because he take a, a, a marriage vow very seriously because he likened this into his bride of the church. So everyone, let's start talking. We know that marriage is hard work.
you know, and it's like a job. You have to continue to work at it, to build, build on it. Just as Ephesians 4, 2, 2 to 3, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Now, with this verse, God wants us to be gentle with one another because when we when we're harsh with one another and and we break the peace amongst one another, it problems uh, tend to exist. Complications seem to come about. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. You know, and you might say, well, why is the greatest of these love? Because God, love, God loves us. Therefore, we are to love our spouse or our mate. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return to their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defeat themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Okay, so Jesus says here that two are better than one. Genesis 2, 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. See, when we intermingle with one another, man and woman, because God created male and female, you create a soul tie. Whereas two souls become one, he looks at us as becoming one flesh. We're no longer two. We take the marriage vows, we're one, become one. That's why he said, what well, man has joined together, let no man put us under. It's a joining of the Lord when you take a marriage vow. And you're no longer under your mom and your, your mother and father. You're now with your spouse, your husband and your wife. Ephesians 5.25, husbands love your wives just as Z Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Now in this verse 5.25 Ephesians, Christ is saying that when you're a husband, that you are to love your wife just as much as he loved the church. Now we know that the Lord loves the church because that's his bride. So this is your wife is your bride, just like the church is God's bride. So he said, the husband, you ought to love your wife as he loved the church. Colossians 3.14 And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. You know, when you're loving one another, is unity there. Unity and togetherness. The Song of Solomon 8.6-7 Please. Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death, is jealousy as enduring as the grave. Love flashes like fire, the brightest kind of flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can rivers drown it. If a man tried to buy love with all his wealth, his offer would be utterly scorned. You cannot buy love. Love is acquired. Genesis 1, 27, 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female. He created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on earth. So everyone, 
This is very, very powerful. When Jesus created male and female, he created the um, free males to be fruitful, to multiply, to bear children with their husbands. When he created male and female, it was for a reason. Everyone, I need to pause the video because the battery is getting low. But don't go anywhere because this is going to be a hot subject. So just stay tuned. I need to pause for a moment, everyone. Okay, everyone, I'm going to resume the video. Um, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 11, it says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. So when, we, when we're um, in a marriage, we must build each other up, encourage one another. You know, talking down to one another is not going to help your relationship. Matthew 19, 6, So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. And God does not wish for us to let anyone in your marriage, anyone outside of your marriage, come and interrupt or interfere in your marriage vows. Because the marriage be is to be um, undefiled, meaning that no one should come in between a husband and a wife. And then in doing this, if you break this covenant, there will be so many complications. Um, things become very complicated. Um, divorce comes about. And then you become a statistic. Um, you know, and your marriage vows will be broken. And then um, a lot of times people tend to separate and and remarry and remarry and remarry you know until they feel like they have really found the person that is for them so this is why it is so important to take marriage vows seriously be sure you ask the Lord if this is the person that God has for you because oftentimes God will give you red flags when it's not the person that's for you you know because the man is the Godhead, and he wished for the man to be a Godhead. You know, so a lot of times when this is a soul and people aren't following the ways of the Lord, temptation can come in between. Now, when you're married in a relationship, or, you know, eventually leading up to a marriage. It's good to court your mate with decency. It's good to respect your mate, as God says, to love your mate, respect your mate, respect one another, to encourage one another, and to be cordial to one another, to love one another. You know, become doing the things that you are to do, you know, as one flesh, being in one flesh. You know, um, you want to things want you want things to come together in your life. You know, you want to share ideas, you want to be enjoy one another. You know, it's good to, to have your mate as a best friend. You know, um, a lot of times people become best friends when they're in a marriage. And this is good, you know. And you don't want to look at a mate as somebody that you can't stand or someone you can't be around, someone you can't look at, you know. And when we're in marriage... It's good to do things, keep things, the fire burning, just as you started with courting and dating. You want to keep dating your mate. You want to come up with ideas 
to date your mate. You know, think, do things that you know your, your mate would like. You know, if your husband would like a nice um, shoulder rub when he comes home, give him a sho shoulder rub, you know, if you're good at that. If you're not good at that, do something else for him that he might like. If he, he if he like his water ran for a bath, do that. But you want to do things that could instill the fire in your marriage and your relationships. And for women, if you like flowers, for your mate to give you flowers or, you know, candy or something of that sort, you want to still do things in your marriage to help keep the fire burning. Now myself, I've been married now for 24 years and I've been with my spouse for half of my life. And so we know a lot about each other. We know a lot about each other's ways, some things we like about each other, some things we don't. We've gone through a lot of things. We've been through the infidelity, you know, outside of the marriage. Uh, we had interference outside of the marriage. We have two children where we were trying to raise our children. And, um, a lot of issues came about.